Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Groove boxes are great. They're not only self-contained music production and performance platforms, they also act as a time capsule giving us a glimpse into the sound aesthetics and workflow of their time. Today we are going to talk about the Roland MC808. This 2006 sampling groove box was released 10 years after the first instrument bearing the groove box moniker and the last one brought to the market before the MC range went on a very long hiatus. Maybe for a reason? At the first glance, the MC-808 is ticking all the Expecto Rolandum boxes. A massive, mostly plastic enclosure, D-beam and 16 rubber buttons devoid of velocity sensitivity. While the display of the more upscale 2003 MC909 looks like something you would actually want to stare at for a longer period of time, Roland went right back to the dark ages with this abomination. The sample-based sound generator got a serious makeover. 128 voices of polyphony are more than enough for 16 tracks of classic drums, deep basses, Rolandian strings and many many rave sounds. Roland went full on Scrooge by shipping the instrument with only 4 megs of sample RAM, but it can be updated to 516 by using DIM modules. It's nice to see a compact flash card slot instead of the smart media storage solution of the MC909. Be prepared for insanely long sample loading times though. Sampling is easy and straightforward. Stereo line or one mic signals are welcome. There's resampling and a mode for sampling while the sequencer is running. Pre-sampling, auto trigger, auto divide and auto trim. Cool. Loop points work great. And samples can be synced to master the tempo. You can drag and drop samples via USB as well, but audio quality is fixed at 44.1 kHz 16 bits. The front panel is revolving around 8 noisy motor faders as the only physical controls for mixing and tweaking the the main UI only allows for tweakage of 12 synth parameters of the four engines per voice. So Roland connoisseurs might expect a lot of menu diving, but don't worry, you will need the antique USB drivers and editor software for that. I had no luck installing these on a contemporary Mac, but there are modified drivers on the web page of this guy which work like a breeze on Windows 10. The editor unveils a complex and powerful rampler. It comes with JV style cross modulation. Multiple routing options, a second LFO, and there's a modulation matrix. Sample editing works pretty well too. Roland threw in an FX section, multi FX, and reverb are solid. And the compressor and mastering effect are surprisingly usable. All FX are preset only as long as you don't use the editor, but there are four controls for the multi FX. The MC808 wouldn't be a groove box without a sequencer. 16 tracks, up to 999 bars per pattern, a TR mode. Real-time recording with quantization, step recording, an arpeggiator with custom patterns, SH-101 style chord memory on steroids and RPS lets you implement musical motifs on the fly. Code 
Tempo Mute Control is a dedicated automation track. OP1 fans look at the undo button with envy, Digitakt enjoyers are longing for the second pair of stereo outs and it's impossible to review an MC groove box without going through three or four of the corniest preset patterns. Song modes are still not my thing, I would say the entire V-Link concept deserves its own Bad Gear episode and MC-808s are more affordable than you might think. The MC-808 could have been the pinnacle of Zero Year's Groovebox design and a classic for years to come. Was it too soon for computer integration and motor faders? You have already heard the groove box in today's intro tune. Roland Romplers just get the job done. Let's start nice and easy with a few of the built-in sounds. This is a very friendly sounding groove box. The motor faders still work surprisingly well, but a few additional knobs would have been helpful in a live situation. Filters are smoother than expected. The MC-808 is more than just a rompler. Time to sample a classic drum loop, max out the built-in FX and use the sequencer to trigger the rocket. Roland is known for great lo-fi FX and the ones on the MC-808 don't disappoint. Loading times aside, the sampling workflow is ok, albeit a bit antiquated, but fader automation looks awesome. The countless presets are fine for live jams. I wanna know if the sound engine is ready for a deep dive in this heroic attempt to fit as many Roland sounds as possible into 30 seconds without turning everything into a total mess. MC-808 is like the missing link between traditional and contemporary groove boxes. Its sound engine is on par with top of the line romplers, it has a ton of great features and computer integration is something we expect from a modern instrument of that kind. However, even in 2006 the MC-808 had a hard time competing with a wide variety of well established software solutions especially given its over reliance on the editor. Today these issues are aggravated. Roland abandoned support a long time ago and it is difficult to tell how long the motor faders will do their job reliably. While working with the MC-808 one thought kept crossing my mind. Where is the ginormous Roland warehouse used for storing all the leftover 80s displays? Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 